Oh my god, hey! Welcome back to my Stage of YouTube channel. If you're meeting me for the first time, hello! My name is Mickey Joe, and I am obsessed with all things theatre. And this is, oh my god, hey! A weekly glimpse into my very theatrical life. This week has already gotten off to like a chaotically busy start. This is my day off of work, so this is when I like to get a lot of stuff done. I have spent the last three hours filming a video about Patti Lapone and the ongoing Hadestown drama that is exporting right now, and I'm literally waiting for that to be done to leave the house to go and meet a friend ahead of seeing a show tonight. I'll tell you more about that later. Um, I'm also making real content at the same time while that exports uh, to try and be efficient with my time because I have so much news to catch up on, which I've been posting on Instagram and TikTok using Reels, so busy! Very busy today. I have a bunch of emails I need to reply to. I'll do that on the train. I'll make the thumbnail for the video on the train. I had a meeting about a business opportunity yesterday. It's all going on. Lots and lots of things, which is really exciting, but also keeps me very busy. So I'm going to get right back to doing that, and I will see you again, hopefully, when I'm on my way to the theatre. Oh my god, hey! Sneaky. Sneaky. Well, it's not going to work for the whole thing. That's really hard. Of course it is! Oh, stop it! You may notice the landmarks around us because we're walking from Farringdon over to the Barbican for tonight's theatre trip. I've never been! This is Aaron's first visit to the Barbican. You're lucky to have me as a guide. I know you've been to the building before, but it's incredibly difficult to get to. My enduring memory of the Barbican is that it is, it's impossible to find unless you do a sneaky trick. I'll tell you what's really confusing with the Barbican. Last time that I was over there, which was last week, uh -huh. There's a really long bridge that you walk under, which is the Barbican Estate. Don't walk under the bridge. I'm about to tell you we're going to get there. Do not walk under the bridge. Which That's the mistake. Is, which one is fascinating, because the whole area of Barbican is just a, an interesting thing upon itself. Yeah. If but, you if you watch my Anything Goes review video, it started with me lost trying to find the Barbican, and everything around it is called Barbican. Yes. So it's so hard to find signposts for it, or like look it up. Well, the thing I found that was really confusing is that Barbican cinemas yeah. is when you get to them, they look like, oh, this is the Barbican, it's very clear, it's just the Barbican. There's many red herrings. I was like, but it's a cinema complex. Yeah. Now, stay on the line, don't go anywhere, because I'm going to give you my number one tip of how to find the Barbican, and it's don't walk under this bridge. I'm going to show you it's what I mean. It's a very long bridge. It's a very long bridge. I did this the first time, nearly made myself late. I was so early, I was still nearly late because I went under this bridge. The inclination is to go under the bridge because the Barbican is over there. Don't do that. That's not what you're going to do. You're going to turn around, you're going to go into Barbican Station. Come with me, come with me, come with me, come with me, come with me. This is a little tutorial for you here. We're going to go up these stairs. and then you're going to come out up here. So rather than going under the bridge, we're going to go over the bridge. And this is going to take us on a much easier route to the Barbican. But if you're looking at Google Maps and getting confused, this might be why, because it doesn't cope well with the whole split level thing that's going on here. Edinburgh has the same problem. <laughs> this is the whole Barbican complex. All of these, these buildings that were built at the same time for accommodation. It's a fascinating little ecosystem of its own up here. All very brutalist architecture. Because there's still signs for things down at the end that say Barbican, but that is not the right Barbican. This is exactly the problem. We want to go down here. And we're gonna go down these stairs. See, that's where you can see the people who've gone under the bridge. Fools! We're going to go down to the end here. And that is, I believe, the easiest way to get to the Barbican Centre. So we're going to go down these stairs at the end here. And this takes us out to, look at this pseudo-futuristic landscape here. This is the back of the Barbican Centre, where we are this evening. 
and here it is. We've arrived at the Barbican. It is interesting how much of that is like the National. Just very similar vibes with how it has been um, interior designed. They give me similar vibes. They give me similar vibes for a few reasons. Hold on, let me join you. They do, because multiple spaces, mm -hmm. big foyer, brutalist exterior, lots of entrances. And also interesting because this is the RSC's London home. I don't think people realise that's why Totoro's here. Yeah, this is the London home of the Royal Shakespeare Company. And that is what we are seeing this evening. If you hadn't already worked that out, we are here to see my neighbour Totoro. My God, are we excited. The show had its first press night last night. I don't know if this is a second press night or overflow or if we're like the B team press night, which is fine. That's I mean, like, I'm fine with that. yeah, I feel like that's, that feels correct. That's, that's where we need to be. Did you just have an off screen gulp of aloe vera? There you go. Product placement. It's not, it's really not. But we are here to see my neighbor Totoro. We are very excited. We've heard some lovely things and um, I'm a bit, I'm a bit overwhelmed actually. I want to go and check out the gift shop because I know that they have plush and you know how I feel about theatrical plush. I've already heard they are expensive though. So I have this quandary. I'm like, do I wait till the interval to see who I feel the most connection to or is that going to make me want to buy the massive 70 pound Totoro plush? Because I feel like that's exactly what's going to happen. So do I just preempt that by buying a cheaper one? before I have the chance to fall in love. Yeah, but then if you want the big one and the one that you've already bought. That's even worse. See, that's exactly. even worse. Uh, let's find out together. We are this here so in the Barbican. Cool. It's very cool. If you don't know, this complex is massive. There's so many levels. You can't really see it all from here. But look at this. We are Totoro ready. I am so excited. Uh, <laughs> look at him. Look at him. I haven't been this excited for a new show in a very long time. Let me tell you that. Okay, here's what you really came here for. We have a little merch preview. Here is all the pricing. We have t-shirts for adults and youths, a hoodie for youths specifically, a tote bag, which is hanging there. These are the t-shirts. That's the youth t-shirt. That's the adult t-shirt. Um, we have a key ring that you can see just to the right here. That's very cute. We have a magnet. Oh, is that the keyring down the key there? Ring. That's the keyring. These, these are okay. I mean, that's a kind of keyring. A key. Yeah. Buddy. Maybe. I don't know. We have. Oh, this is the lapel pen there. I'm not sure where the magnet is necessarily. If I'm being completely honest, we have the coffee mug. The my neighbor Totoro coffee mug and we have umbrellas and posters so this is the umbrella here and I spoiled red there's the magnet we found it lovely these are the umbrellas and then what I really came here for we have the plush look at this here is the plushy price list okay so for the clip-on which is these little guys up here that is 20. We have small fluffy, small, medium, large, or cat bus. This I gather is the cat bus for 35. I think this must be the small fluffy because it's very fluffy. It is very fluffy. I'm, very, I'm quite taken with the small fluffy just right off the bat. I'm gonna put that out there. Oh, turn around. Is this a... <gasps> oh no. Oh dear. Oh wait, no, that's a small fluffy. Oh, is that the small fluffy? Oh, he's... Oh, I don't know. No, I think that's the medium. No, that's the small. That's a small. Such questions. That's the small because it's £10 more. That's the small fluffy. That's the small fluffy. This is small. I think it's, I just described this one as fuzzy rather than fluffy. Oh, I see. That's two different sizes. Small, medium, big boy. Oh, gosh. Gosh, I have some choices ahead of me. I caved, I gave in. <laughs> I bought a small, non-fluffy. You are still fluffy, but you are the less fluffy of the two. And a lapel pin for Aaron. Yay. Lovely. Uh, we got these in the Barbican gift shop because we were super early and they hadn't started the merch booth yet, but they have since so cute. opened a very cute merch booth behind us. I so mean, this gives me a future life. 
possibly. Find if You'd it's assume so. To merch stuff. You'd assume so. You don't work this hard on merch without thinking about a future life. And talking about even more merch. I overheard the conversations. They did. They were talking about more merch. Saying that people are already requesting different ones for adults. Yeah, I wish they had a, the green t shirt That's in an adult size. That's what everybody's saying, but it's what everybody's just been saying. The green t shirt is super cute. I wish they had it in an adult size because I'd wear it. Yeah. But they don't, so I shan't. Find your spirit. <laughs> we are here in the Barbican Theatre. They are their doors. We are in the stalls and we are ready for My Neighbor Totoro. I am so excited. There's something very cinematic again about this, uh, this preset. Say, it's possibly one of my favorite preset like, screens I've seen in a long time. You know it's going to expand. Totoro, my god, hey. Eh? You see what I did. We are back from My Neighbor Totoro, press night at the Barbican. It was so many things. I am going to sit down and talk about it, uh, but it was really spectacular and it was the kind of thing that just reawakened and thrilled my inner child. I was enchanted throughout. They do some beautiful things on that stage. It's a really clever production and it's the kind of theatre that if kids can sit through it, because it is quite long and it is quite slow in places, um, but utterly charming and very whimsical, if they can last through it, it's a really great first introduction for kids as to what theatre can do and to, um, because it's the kind of show where it shows you the strings and it shows you the mechanisms behind things, especially right towards the end of the show. Uh, so yeah, yeah, very cute um, that it exposes all of that, I think. But I'm not gonna tell you too much more about it now. No, I'm not. You're going to have to go and watch my My Neighbor Totoro review, which hopefully by the time you see this is probably already live on my YouTube channel, unless something has gone very wrong. But hopefully you'll be able to go and watch that. Oh my God, hey! We are back in London today. Where were we yesterday? Where have you just seen us? Totoro. Why am I asking you? Totoro! We were at my neighbour Totoro at the Barbican. Oh, Totoro. 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 Having a magical time. Can we go this way? I know we can cut through here, but it's possible I've led us... I think so. ...on a fool's errand. We'll find out. We'll find out together. We're walking from Victoria Station to Battersea to uh, go and see... But I'm a cheerleader. I think I mentioned this to you on my previous one that I was meant to see But I'm a cheerleader last week. There was some cast illness, it's been rescheduled. Ooh, nearly fell. These flats are nice. So we're heading over to the turbine, but also they have recently, after much redevelopment, finally 13 reopened, 13 years? Something like that, yeah. Finally reopened Battersea Power Station as a bougie shopping center. So we're gonna go and look at that as well. And we're gonna take you with us so you can see what Battersea Power Station is like. See what your pre-show options are for turbine theater performances. Okay, we're gonna go and check it out. Come with us, why don't you? Look how pretty the bridge looks when it's lit up. We were saying how long it's been since we've been here when the bridge is lit up. But very pretty, very nice. And you can see Battersea Power Station over there with a sort of... Yeah, it kind of looks like Armageddon in the background, but you know, hopefully, hopefully should be fine, or at the very least we'll be indoors. Here it is the newly renovated Battersea Power Station. It looks very futuristic. Well, it kind of looks like how the future was portrayed in like 90s animated films. It's very that, it's very like the world of tomorrow. Oh, we're going this way. So if you are looking for quick eats before the turbine, I don't know how permanent these are, but we have some little food trucks at the foot of Battersea Power Station. We have the Pizza Post, the Duck Truck, my personal favorite just for the name, and then we had some Mexican options back over there, tacos, hola, burritos, guacamole. nachos. Oh, hola guacamole. Hola, hola guacamole. That's, yeah, it's like it's almost a rhyme, but then it's not. I'm not sure how I feel about that. And then was it American Smash Burgers down at the end? I feel like there's some more on the other side as well. So some interesting options. Maybe these will rotate, who knows? We've got plant-based options here with Greedy Vegan, not yet open, but all you could want for grass. Halloumi Bite. Everyone likes a bit of Greek. Interesting, interesting. And then a currently unused kiosk. 
And what do we have here? Chicken nachos. Hello. Chicken nachos. Wow. And gluten free. Yes, Rob. Nice. Okay, so I opted for the crispy duck wrap with double duck. Hoisin sauce, uh, cucumber, spring onion in a wrap. Very nice. But look at what we have just gone in to discover. This is it. This is the, uh, the newly reopened retail experience in Battersea Power Station. It's so, so cool. So futuristic. Just to give you a sense of the kind of vibe of shops that we're seeing, we have a Lululemon, we have a Uniqlo, I love Uniqlo, um, and we have a lot more things down here that I can't see yet, but it is kind of like your bougie brands and businesses that you would expect in this kind of a fancy ass destination. Okay, so we've walked around a bit more. It's a whole mix of vibes. You have a big old Nike down there, and then we've got kind of like a mix of food places and um, just kind of designer little outlety type places. There's a Locutan en Provence, Le Bab, which is the fanciest kebab shop I have ever seen in my life. Got Poker House behind me, Clarendon, fine art, Paris Baguette, and then you know you're somewhere bougie. When you see a ladder, eh? We do a zoom in on those macarons. Yes, but not very far. Do I want a macaron? I'd prefer an artisanal donut. That's really more my speed. I don't begrudge anyone a macaron. And then this, that I'm showing you behind it, this is all a history of Battersea Power Stage. Lovely. Retaining some of the building's original character, which is what gives you such a fascinating interior. And then over on the other side, we have more of the same. Battersea Power Station. We have a Super Dry. Abercrombie and Fitch. Sketches, Abercrombie and Fitch. Mango. Keels. Breitling, Genesis Studio. I mean, it's the usual expected things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all here, you got a Levi's. Got a random piano, because why not? It's all very Instagrammable. So then you step outside of Battersea Power Station and it's another just very futuristic little area. Although the problem is, like with so many of these super clean, sleek, futuristic modern places, where are the bins? Rubbish still exists. I know it's not aesthetic. Oh, oh! I didn't realize these were bins. Okay, so there's no bins inside of the shopping center. If there were, I missed those. There is a downstairs. There's a Zara. Oh, the Leon is not yet open. Or it has been open, but it's closed. This is devastating news. I need a cookie or a, or a brownie or something. Otherwise I will become cranky. Oh, maybe I'll get pick and mix at the, at the turbine. I don't have pick and mix. Have they discontinued the tip? Oh. It's just Haribo bags. This Unless is deeply upsetting. Unless it was a thing of it lost. You know, like, yeah. Out of yeah, well, I'm not happy about it. Should we go in this Zara? It's huge. This Zara is enormous. We're going to go in this Zara, you guys. So, Zara right now do not understand my colour scheme, and that's okay. Hopefully, they will by their next season. I'm going to be patient with you, Zara. Uh, but we did get some sweet treats from Joe and the Juice. Random place to get sweet treats from. Um, but you got a gluten free Snickers bar. Yeah. It's raw, raw ingredients. Yeah, and I have a chocolate muffin, so excited to try. Okay, if you can hear me, we have reached the Turbine Theatre for this evening's performance of But I'm a Cheerleader. We're going to go inside and we're going to settle the myth of whether or not they still have pick and mix, because rumours are beginning to spread now. We're going to go see a show. We'll see you later. Bye. I hope you stay well. <laughs>
my god, hey! Oh my god, hey! And also, oh my god, it has been a day! As you can see, we are just leaving the theatre cafe where we have been chilling. We've just finished two very long days at Musical Con. It's Sunday, and we are on our way to Gala Night, aka Gala Night, for Rob Madge's amazing show, My Sons Are Queer But What Can You Do? Round the corner at the Garrick Theatre. Um, so, Theatre Cafe beforehand is an obvious little go to. Before we went in though, we walked up to the Noel Coward where Dear Evan Hansen was playing until yesterday and they've already taken down all of the signage. That is... It looks so weird. It's dark and intense and I don't like it. I don't like it. I mean a theatre that's dark is just a horrible thing. There's nothing natural about it. I don't like... There's a couple of them in it as well because the ambassadors is dark as well. Yeah, it's sad. It's very, very sad. Um, but until new artwork goes up, which is hopefully soon, that is what it looks like. Um, obviously that closed on Saturday night, we were there as well, you may have already seen that video on my channel. It's been a busy weekend you guys, yes. it's been a very busy weekend, but very excited for um, some celebratory queer wonderfulness with Rob Madge's show round the corner. We're going to walk there now and we're going to take you with us. Okay, so we have, look at this artwork outside of the theatre. This is so cool, look at Rob Madge's enormous face. Up there you have the official poster for the show and for this show to have giant artwork outside the Garrick on this street that means an awful lot to me and to an awful lot of people. I think that's really powerful and that achieves something very special. Oh I see flashes! It is Gala Night after all. Let's go and find out what that's about. Oh my goodness, hello. Ellie is here. Hello. Sean is here. Aaron is still here. And we are all we're here, we're queer, we're late. We're late. <laughs> we're late for the start of our tour. Very important It wouldn't be an LGBT press night if we weren't all late to the event. Let's go! We're going to go sit down now. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I have cried. I cried at the same time. I already told you when I cried in my Edinburgh video. It was the same time. It's the happy stuff. It's the happy cries that get me. Rather than the obviously sad stuff, but... And the fact that they were here as well made it super special. Everyone was here at this press now. Oh my god, I can't tell you too loudly, because they're still standing near me. But some legends of musical theatre are within a metre radius of where I am right now. So it's an exciting time. But yes, beautiful show. Lovely press night and lovely to have it on the West End. Very meaningful. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing but local pride this one. Oh my god, hey. Also. Oh my god. It is the morning after Musical Con weekend that also Stay with me. Huh? That also <laughs> included the closing night of Dervin Hansen and Gosh. Gala Night for Rob Madge's amazing show My Sons Are Queer, but what can you do last night in the West End? And needless to say, we are exhausted. I've spent most of the day um, editing together my Musical Con footage to try and get that video out as soon as possible. Never say I don't work hard for you guys. Uh, but I do have to actually uh, start looking like a real human being and get ready because I'm speaking at an event this evening. You fancy. I am. I'm speaking at a dinner for Good Speed Musicals from the US who are having their annual trip with their members and they're having a welcome dinner on the first night of a week of exciting theatre going over here in London and they have asked me to come and speak which is very exciting which is a lovely little opportunity that has arisen because of YouTube and because of all of this so that's exciting, but it does mean I need to um, go and have a shower and put on a suit and go and sound presentable and coherent and eloquent because we spoke to so many people over this weekend, which was amazing and fantastic. So, so lovely. But there was so much socialising that you do just forget how to, how to make words happen and how to string a sentence together. So yeah. at some point over the next few hours, I'm hoping my brain wakes up because my brain is still in hibernation. But I'm going to go and get ready and pick a suit. And pick a suit. I have many jackets and many ties, so we will have to decide. Oh my god, hey, if you are curious, this is the finished look for the dinner event that I'm speaking at this evening. I kind of feel like a 1950s game show host, but... 
Thank you, my love. I'm not mad about that. Check out the matching shoes. I feel like I could be in Hades Town right now. But I am dressed, and I am hopefully ready to go and speak to some theatrical people. Oh my god, hey. Oh my gosh, is that what my hair looks like? Excuse me. Excuse me. Is that better? Is that better? Difficult to say. It's been windy, and I've taken several trains. I am just on my way home from the hotel that I've been speaking at this evening. It went very well. They were so lovely. It was terrifying. I was deeply nervous because very different talking to a room full of people rather than talking to a camera. But once I got into the Q&A part of it, I got a lot more comfortable with it and I was engaging and answering individuals' questions and chatting to them about shows that they liked and stuff they were interested in and I found that really great and really rewarding. So I would love to do more stuff like that in the future, but what an amazing opportunity. And I got a bottle of wine. Yay. Love that for me. And a very fancy hotel dinner, which was amazing. And I got to meet so many lovely people. So, a wonderful evening. And now I'm looking forward to going home and going back to bed, because I'm still so tired. Oh my God, hey. It is a new day. I am slightly more recovered from the maddest musical weekend ever. I have been to the gym, I have attempted to be productive, I tried to get some videos filmed and edited amidst some technical chaos, and I still have a couple of reviews to write up from shows that I saw last week. I was at the Park Theatre on Friday, and I didn't take you with me. I'd had a very long work day, and I just needed some quiet theatre and an enormous glass of wine, and I got both of those things, but that was, um, a play at the Park Theatre called A Single Man, which I was at by myself, appropriately, based on a Christopher Isherwood novel that I discovered on holiday once. A very important queer writer that I admire very much. And so that was a very interesting evening, and I still need to write up the review for that. And today, if you haven't already recognised where I am, I'm in Shepherd's Bush, which is not somewhere I come too often. Um, but I'm here this evening for the Bush Theatre, the aptly named Bush Theatre, where I'm going to be reviewing a show in their studio space called Elephant. It's a solo show from Anushka Lucas, who was the star of Oklahoma recently at the Young Vic. She played Laurie, and she was in Jesus Christ Superstar at Regent's Park Open Air Theatre. And this, as I understand it, is a solo show with music. I'm very intrigued to find out more about this. And because I'm in Shepherd's Bush, I have Ben's Cookies, Cranberry and White Chocolate which is as exciting as the theatre, because these are lovely. Even if Aaron can't have any, because they are filled with gluten. So very glutinous. And I'm going to put you down now, because I am only 40% sure I'm walking in the right direction. Excuse me. Mm. Okay. I'm now up to 80% sure I'm walking in the right direction. And also, the white chocolate and cranberry cookie was exemplary. I didn't show it to you because I ate it too fast. A betrayal? Perhaps. Perhaps. And I regret that. But it was really good. I've only ever been to the bush twice before, and the first time I was coming here for a job interview, this was years ago when I was looking at theatre industry jobs, and I wasn't quite sure what sort of role I wanted to occupy within the theatre industry, and I was trying to branch out into some different things. And it was a very half-baked sort of a plan, which is why I was not given that job. But I have then subsequently been since for a press night, and I was sat next to an actor from How to Get Away with Murder, who's incredibly tall and statuesque and model-like in real life, so that was, that was just a little bit intimidating. So we will see, we will see who I am next to this evening. Oh 
my god hey thank you so much for watching this week's oh my god hey and following Erin and I around on our stagey adventures if you want to catch up on any of the reviews from the shows that I saw this week some of them are here on YouTube some of them are on my blog mickeyjotheatre.co.uk and for the rest you can go to showscore.com using the link in the description down below if you click on that and make an account you will automatically be following me on there and not only will you see all of my reviews for London based shows that I have written online but you will also be able to review shows for yourself how fun so much fun but also tiring and I desperately need to sleep by the time I'm filming this it is already a new stagey week that has begun and I have started filming for next week's oh my god hey make sure you're subscribed to my channel so that you catch that coming on Sunday episode 9 can you believe it if you did enjoy this video and you would like to support me as a stagey content creator you can use the super thanks button down below to give me a tip that really helps me to keep making content like you've just watched and you can go to patreon.com forward slash mickey joe theater where you can also gain access to some exclusive photo and video content I hope that everyone is staying safe and that you have a stagey day. For ten more seconds, I'm Mickey Joe Theatre. Oh my god, hey. Thanks for watching, have a stagey day. Subscribe!